Firstly, thank you very much for the invitation to participate in this conference today. And I'm sorry I can't be with you, but we're doing the best we can from Brussels. The whole topic of equity with justice is an extremely important one in the issue of climate change, that we well understand at the European level as activists that so many of the problems now being created for countries like Bangladesh have been put in place by countries that you know, the industrialized world, they're the ones that really ought to be making the major efforts, certainly in terms of, mitiga of mitigation. And it's low-level countries, poorer countries, Bangladesh, the Maldives, Seychelles, etc., that are really paying the penalty. That within the European Parliament, one of the tasks that I have is that I chair the delegation for South Asia. And this includes Bangladesh as one of the six countries for which we have relationships. That recently we've been in Bangladesh just two or three weeks ago. We met people there from the parliament who are involved in the Climate Change and Environment Committee. People from all political parties working together to have what they want to see as a consistent policy that carries forward regardless as to which party is the party of government. And for them that is profoundly important. We also met with the Prime Minister and raised again the issues of climate change with her as also with the Deputy Foreign Minister. So this is something which now we would want to do anyway. I'm a Green, I would want to be doing this, but also all delegations of the European Parliament are now asked when we meet with parliaments, when we meet with um, government representatives from other countries to raise the issue of climate change and to try and bring forward action and better understanding. Because what we're facing at the moment is not just an economic crisis, it's also an ecological crisis. And climate change is very much at the heart of that in the way in which we perceive our planet. And as the Deputy Foreign Minister said to us when we were in Bangladesh recently, there's still this discussion in parts of the world as climate change exists, you know, is it just sort of a, a conspiracy theory? He said, well, here for us in Bangladesh, climate change is real, it's here, it's now. We are seeing the impacts and women are seeing those impacts even more than men in the poorest communities. It's difficult, however, still to make many of the arguments at the international level for why we should be moving forward on climate change and really taking action. We saw this in the really disappointing outcome of the Copenhagen process, where despite so much effort having gone into it from civil society actors, from governments, from a whole range of organisations, we actually saw that conference sidetracked by many of the world's biggest emitters who weren't willing to sign up under the UN process. We saw a little bit more progress at Durban. We're told by Bangladeshi government and others that the European Union's perspective at that conference was important and that working with the most vulnerable countries, the European Union is making progress. But that was a fight at the Brussels end as well, and I'll say a bit more about that in the moment. And people are now turning their attention to the discussions later on this year in the Rio Plus 20 um, conferences, what's going to be the outcome? Those being the conferences that 20 years ago set the whole climate change process in movement at an international level. That at the European level, we're also finding it a struggle. We're hearing again these voices that say we're not rich enough, we, you know, we've got an economic crisis, we can't move forward on climate change. But we know Bangladeshi government is taking the argument, in theory the European process is the same, that for every dollar you spend now on climate change, on tackling that, you save five in the future. We're trying to make an argument that the more we invest now in clean technologies, in energy efficiency, in that roadmap towards actually reducing our emissions, that that also has a bigger impact. Because we know that for all the targets that we've put in place, if we carry on at the rate we're going, we will already have more emissions in the atmosphere than, you know, than we should be having there if we want to go and hold climate change at an increase of two degrees in temperature. And certainly there's a view that we're now hitting the point where we could be reaching a runaway system on climate change. 
The European Union's own target, 20% reduction on climate change emissions on 1990 targets by 2020, is frankly, in the view of many of us, absolutely pathetic. It's far too little, it's not what the science is telling us. But we're having enough of, to really hold governments to that 20% reduction. The European Union has a position where if other governments move forward, they will go to 30% reduction by 2020. But time is running out on that. And we're not really seeing great movements, certainly from the states, um, you know, from India, a bit of movement from China, but not within that context, to really make that realisable. So we're still having to push from the European Parliament end. A vote that we had last week on our own climate, uh, on our own energy roadmap for 2050, which is supposed to try and help decarbonise our own sort of energy um, usage, is better than it might have been, but is still far too weak on issues around the emissions trading system. How do we really get that back and running again? Because, of course, so much of the income from that is supposed to be funding um, adaptation, mitigation measures in countries outside the European Union, not least some of the world's poorest countries like Bangladesh. So it was a disappointing outcome for us on that. And we're still having this argument within the Parliament to try and get tighter targets, more action. It's an argument within the Commission, our own Commissioner, Connie Hedgard, on climate change, really trying to make the running there. But we know that there are some commissioners who are almost, as it were, clinging around our ankles, trying to hold her back and saying, well, you know, no, we have to go back for growth as usual, get the economy running as first. So it's a struggle in the commission. And we know it's a struggle in council amongst our member states, where one of them recently, Poland, was described as being almost the Tea Party equivalent in climate change negotiations. But that's an issue that we have to take on board as activists, as politicians in the European Union, to try and make our governments hand, you know, sort of stick to the promises that they've given and bring forth the funding that they've said that they will, they will give. We're also trying to use our influence still internationally. And this is also where we can work with countries such as Bangladesh because this becomes really important within the region. India is still very reluctant to really try and do anything about cutting its emissions. But the old arguments about, well, we historically are not responsible, many of us think no longer hold water because they are responsible now for future emissions. So the role of Bangladesh and other countries such as the Maldives within SARC within pushing India for real reductions is extremely important and the European Union will do what it can to support you on that. One of the things which was in our energy roadmap last week was also calling for targets for reductions of black carbon, which is a real problem we know in terms of accelerating the melting of the glaciers, which is part and parcel of a future water problem for countries such as Bangladesh. That's another issue which can be taken up within SARC. India is one of the major emitters there. Again, we will be pushing four targets on this as much as we possibly can and we'll do everything possible to support the government of Bangladesh on that. One of the big problems of course, again as it was put to us by your Deputy Foreign Minister, is that these international agreements are very much about trying to stop the wolves eating the lamb. And in that case what he was referring to, Bangladesh as a country whose carbon emissions are lower than those of Manhattan actually runs a risk of seeing its future totally affected by what happens elsewhere. It's one of the reasons why the European Union is putting money into the Climate Resilience Fund. We're very much willing to work with the government of Bangladesh on your own government's climate change targets and programmes. It's one, another of the reasons why we're helping to support one of the programmes represented at your conference today about how do we help the, the, the civil society actors in Bangladesh to actually be making their voice heard and to encourage um, the right sort of energy policies for your country, for surrounding countries, to try and keep your government strong on these issues and magnify the voice of Bangladesh. It's also one of the reasons why we're involved with the, the SEALS project, protecting, helping you know, to develop capacity within the forestry sort of commission, forestry department, to protect the Sundarbans, which are so important in terms of resilience and helping to develop livelihoods in Bangladesh. But this is a it's a, a topic which 
it, it's about the survival of our planet. And it's something in which we, from the developed countries, which are actually part, the major part of the problem, really have to be there to support financially, with technology transfer, with every means possible. Countries such as Bangladesh, whose future is really in the hands of people elsewhere. And so I really, one of the things which came out of our meeting in Bangladesh with the Environment Committee there, was, Environment and Climate Change Committee, was that we're going to try and strengthen the cooperation between the European Parliament and that committee from the Bangladeshi Parliament to make sure that Bangladesh's, Bangladesh's voice is heard in our Parliament and we do what we can as well to support the people of Bangladesh. So thank you again for the invitation to be at the conference. I'm sorry I can't be with you, but you know, we're working for solidarity and, greater, and you know, the delivery of justice on this issue where those of us responsible for the problem actually live up to our responsibilities to help those that are going on the receiving end of climate change. Thank you.